Hey more families, welcome back. We are ready to start the week with another art lesson. This is gonna be a drawing lesson. Um, it's called Picture Consequences. And I do have one third grade group who is familiar with this art lesson, um, but everybody else, it should be new stuff. So Picture Consequences is actually, it started as a game in the early 1920s. Um, by a bunch of surrealist artists and writers. You can do a different version of this project with um, writing different sentences and stories. Um, but we're gonna do the drawing version of it today. So picture consequences. You are going to need paper, a straight edge or a ruler to use, um, a pencil and something to color with. Um, we're gonna be making two different versions of picture consequences. We're gonna make a very simple version for maybe my pre-K through uh, second grade friends. And then we'll be making a more complicated version of picture consequences where we're gonna be folding and cutting for my um, third through fifth. So um, you can choose to do both or you can just try maybe the simple one before doing your, the more complicated one. Um, so when you get your supplies, you can meet me back here. I actually already have my supplies, so if you need to press pause, you're welcome to do that. But I'm gonna go ahead and get started. So, picture consequences. If you have a nice rectangular piece of paper, this works best. So, even if you have a piece of paper this size, they all work. Um, but I'm gonna show you with my large paper so you can get a better idea of how to do this. So, first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna be folding your paper, um, even if you're doing the simple version. So you're gonna take a big piece and you're gonna fold it in half, hamburger style. It means like this, like a book. Let me just put that one out of the way. So I'm gonna take it, pressing down on the seam. Okay, you wanna make sure that that seam is really pressed down nice. So we're gonna be folding this piece of paper again, and we're gonna be folding it to the same direction. Okay, so we started out like this, folding it in half, and we're gonna fold it again. So we had one piece and then we folded it and we had two pieces and now when I open it how many pieces do you think I'll have four right yep four pieces so I'm gonna open this up now so one two three four pieces now I only need three pieces for my um, drawing consequences for my older group and I only need this little piece for my younger group Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna cut. If you don't have scissors, you can always just fold back and forth on the seam. I'm gonna show you this real quick. But you gotta make sure that you really press down good on that seam. And what this does is it breaks down the fibers in the paper. The pieces that hold the paper together, they start to get weak as you fold this back and forth. And you can just start tearing it okay so this is something that you might want to use if you don't have scissors around to use okay so now I've got paper for both projects so let's do um, my younger group first okay so this piece I'm going to fold like this and I'm gonna to put it to the side because I'm not ready to use this yet so picture consequences Typically, you will see three or four sections for this. Um, this is a, a good family activity you can do, or you can always do it by yourself. I'm gonna show you my example really quick. So this is gonna be folded into three pieces. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and fold mine up so you guys can kind of see it a little bit better. Okay, so who's that? I know most of you guys know who this is. I know Camden likes this guy. This is Dogman. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this piece of paper and I'm gonna draw three different characters, but I'm only gonna draw them in their rectangle. So I'm gonna fold this piece of paper into three pieces. You can also do it into four pieces, but for today I'm gonna do three. So that is my, my very first piece. That's the head of my person, okay? And then the second part of my person, who's that? Some of you might know. That's Harry Potter. Now his wand wasn't isn't long enough, but that is a Harry Potter body right there. Okay, so that is one, two, that's his torso, and then section three, 
Can anyone guess who that is? It's Pete the cat, right? In his shoes. So the idea here is that I am drawing three completely separate things. They're, they're either an animal or a person standing upright, but when I put them all together, they make something really silly. So this is gonna be my example here. So head, torso, legs and feet. So what I need to do now is I need to fold my piece of paper into three pieces. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it horizontal in front of me instead of vertical, and I'm gonna roll it. And this doesn't have to be perfectly even, but you see how I'm doing that? I'm not doing hard folds right now. I'm just, I'm gonna pretend like I'm gonna roll it up, and then I'm gonna push down. If you want to just do your best um, folding it, or you can even use a ruler and you can work on measuring, uh, that would be fine in dividing it into three pieces. But I, for this, I just rolled it, and when I open it up, there's three pieces, okay? So what you're gonna do now that you have your three pieces, you just wanna fold it real good. You don't wanna draw those lines. You're gonna draw yourself your first character. Now, I always like to start with the head. So you wanna draw yourself a character head up here and I like to make mine um, different like there are some books um, that have they're all maybe a, a, a girl and she wears different costumes are they're all boys and they're all different kinds of superhero costumes I would like to do maybe something like ooh, how about a robot head so my robot head is gonna be boxy and I'll go over this a little bit darker so you guys can see a little bit better I do recommend using pencils. So if you make any mistakes, you can erase them. Okay. So I'm gonna do a robot head. And what I wanna do is I either wanna have the head touch this fold down here or I want to draw a neck. And I wanna go just a little bit further than halfway. Now the fun way to do this is to fold the head back. So I've got my head done. I may wanna add some extra details to this later on, like, you know, well, add a nose, maybe some eyebrows. But I can do some more details on that later. So what I have now is I have my head complete. Now it's time to do the torso. So anything like the shoulders down to your belly button or your hips. Um, so I'm gonna fold this back. And I still have these little lines right here. So this tells me I know where to start my body. So what kind of body am I gonna make? It could be an animal, it could be a person, it could be a monster, um, anything I want. So I think what I'm gonna do, hmm, what should I do? I'm gonna do a pig body. Hmm. Just cause pigs are so cute and fun. Okay, so um, I'm gonna do, now it has to be something on, two legs, so my pig is gonna be a cartoon version of a pig standing up. So, I've got his little body here, and I'm gonna do his tail, okay? And now I do need to add some arms to this, and my pig, because he's a cartoon, can be holding anything he wants. So, I'm gonna have my pig holding a bucket of popcorn. Why not? This is fun. So he's got popcorn in his hand. Okay, so I've got his one arm, and then maybe he's got his other arm up waving. Okay, so I've got my robot head, my pig body, now I need my legs. Now I'm gonna draw a little line under that fold, the fold line's right here. I'm gonna draw just a little bit past that so I know where to start the legs. And I'm gonna fold it again because I don't wanna see what it looks like yet. I wanna save a surprise, I love surprises. So, here's the end of my pig body and now I need to make some legs. So, what kind of legs or what kind of tail? Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be um, two. It could be a, a mermaid fin, it could be, um, the robot part could be on the bottom and it can be wheels. Um, Let's see, what can I do down here? I'm gonna do some Bigfoot feet, okay? Bigfoot, big, big feet. He's got hairy, hairy legs. I'm gonna draw his big toes. Okay, hairy legs. Big old toes. Now he only has three, 
three toes in my picture. Here's some toenails. Then his heels. And you know what? Bigfoot. Now he's he's a pretend character, right? There's no there's no such thing as Bigfoot. But if he did, I bet you he would have smelly feet. So I'm gonna add some lines that look like stinky feet lines. Okay? So oh, how about some texture, some implied texture on these legs? There we go. So they look a little bit more fuzzy. So what I have is my front is a robot, torso of a pig, and then feet of Bigfoot. The fun part is when you open it up without looking beforehand, <gasps> look how funny that is. He has a robot head, pig body, and Bigfoot feet. That's so silly. So I am done with the drawing part of this unless I wanted to add some extra things. Um, but I think I'm done. What I wanna do now is I wanna go over this in Sharpie just because Mrs. Marple loves going over things in Sharpie. Um, but you could use a pen or you can go ahead and start coloring at this point. So I am going to finish up my drawing consequences, the small version with Sharpie. And um, I'm going to take a break right now and show the older students and adults, adults, this is fun, you should try it. I'm gonna show them how to do the more complicated version of this really quick. So um, if you're working on this, I can't wait to see what it looks like. I'll show you mine at the end, what it looks like with extra details and color. Okay guys, so we are now ready <clears throat> to do the advanced version of drawing consequences. So we've got our dog man example done. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do um, a three, three paneled version. So my example here, um, we're gonna have the front be one character. You're gonna be able to open it up, another character, open up the very, very last piece, and you should have three total characters. And you can see that they're different because they, they are all completely one character, not like this guy with three different pieces. He was folded, and these have three different sections here that we're gonna be cutting, but you're still gonna draw the complete character intact. And then what we're gonna be able to do is we're gonna be able to play with them by flipping to the different pieces. Okay, so now it looks like a boy wearing a cat suit. Maybe a monster wearing a cat suit, fully cat, right? And you're gonna be able to flip. So it makes it a lot of fun to kind of see what different kind of combinations you can make with all of these. Right? So um, this is what we're making now, so a more advanced version. So in order to get these flaps to be nice and even so that every time you turn it, it's it's gonna be the head, you're not gonna cut off part of the head whenever you're flipping your pages. We need to make sure that all of your, um, your cuts are, are done correctly. So you should have this um, trifold piece of paper that's left over from our small version of this assignment. And so what we're gonna do now is we're going to either use our eye and just kind of measure about a third of the way down. You wanna be able to have about three equal pieces. You can also use your ruler for this if you'd like to make sure things are exact. I'm just gonna use my eyeball here, and I'm gonna go about a third of the way down, draw a little dot, another dot like that, and then I'm gonna use my ruler, and I'm gonna draw all the way across. Okay, and you want it to be pretty straight. Okay, so that's the very first step, getting your three portions. Now, if you wanted to do four sections, you can do this, you can make it even more complicated than my example, and you can make the feet a separate piece. You could just divide this um, bottom piece into two pieces. You'd want the feet to be relatively small down here at the bottom. I'm gonna do three. So after you get these first two lines drawn, you're going to cut just on this layer of paper. You don't wanna cut through the whole thing. Remembering always to cut away from you and make sure that you have permission to be using scissors. These are some big old adult scissors that can be super dangerous. So um, I would use a smaller pair of scissors or make sure that maybe an adult cuts it for you. So this is what it looks like now. I'm only cutting to this middle piece, okay? So now, oops, I'm gonna fold this whole piece back in and now I'm gonna use these flaps as a guide and I'm going to just trace underneath each of those pieces. So now that when I lift it, 
that line is there. It's exactly the same width as this piece here, which I need, okay? And then you're gonna do the same thing for the next one. You're gonna flip that guy over, draw underneath, okay? So now I have my two lines again. I'm going to cut on those lines. Trying not to cut that middle piece there. So, this is what it looks like. My middle piece is intact and my two sides have the three flaps, the two cuts a piece. So I'm gonna fold all of one side in and all of one side over so that now I can start the drawing part of this. Um, so what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that these three panels right here are these three flaps on this first panel are all the same character, just like over here. So my first character was my monster. So they all need to be connected and make sure that they, they look correct because the fun part is that they all look normal and then all of a sudden they change in pieces. So um, kind of like the first example, I like to do different things. And so I think on the first piece here, um, I'm gonna make it a snowman. And I wanna make sure that um, my head either comes down to this line or I create little necklines to go down so I, I can make sure that it's equally pieced when I do the next one. So snowman head, and I'm just gonna do this real quick and I'll put my details on later so you guys can kind of get the idea. And the bottom piece is real big, it's going off the page, can't see all of it. There we go. Okay, so little snowman on the front. Snowman pieces, next page. We're gonna flip all three, two, three. So this next part, it could be maybe, oh, maybe let's do season. So we did winter, so now I'm gonna do fall. So I'm gonna think of a fall character. Ooh, how about a scarecrow? All right, so I need to follow the same rules. So there's my head, little patch on there. I'll add some details to him later. Okay, so neck, shoulders is where this starts. Coat. He's got overalls on. Okay, and then legs down here. down here. Okay, so I've got my snowman, I've got my scarecrow, and oh, you know what we forgot to do? Forgot to draw the lines on this solid piece on the inside. That's an important part. Okay, so you need to use these flaps over here again to trace, but remember we're not cutting this time. So now I have those two lines here. They need to be there, but we're not going to cut on them. Okay, so I've got winter, I've got fall. Ooh, let's do a spring thing. Um, ooh, let's do Easter Bunny. So I've got three very different things, so I know it's gonna be a lot of fun to look at when I flip the pages. Okay, bunny. Easter Bunny is wearing glasses. Got a big bow on. Make that on the second half. So his neck comes down here, good. Um, and you can have him holding different things, because remember, whatever he's holding, when you change pages, that means that um, you know my snowman has to hold a, ba a basket of eggs, or my scarecrow has to now hold that, and that's what kind of makes it funny. And his tail. And then we'll do his bunny feet. So I now have my three different characters. What I want to do now is I want to make sure that they line up okay. It's looking like they do. I'm going to go over these and add some details to all of my characters before I go over them in Sharpie. Um, I can't wait to see what you guys come up with with your characters. Um, I'll show you the finished product of my 
drawing consequences, the smaller version, and then I'll show you what I ended up with the more advanced version, um, and I'll see you in just a few minutes. Okay, so I have completed my drawing consequences with Sharpie. Um, I haven't colored them yet. I want to take a little bit more time on that. So I was just going to show you really quickly what they turned out to look like. I am really happy with them and I can't wait to finish these up. And then my more complicated version, I was going to show you the three separately and then kind of mix them up. So we've got Scarecrow, Snowman, and Easter Bunny. Let's see what the Easter Bunny looks like with some, some boots on. And how about a snowman head? Pretty funny. Now these, there's so many different things you could do to these. Look at that. That's that's hilarious. I love it. So um, I hope you guys have fun with these two lessons. Um, you obviously, if you did the smaller version and you had the all different, um, you had the three extra panels, you could do, um, you could make one for each of your family or you guys can make it the game and pass it around the dinner table. This is a really fun way to connect with um, older siblings or your parents um, where you guys can each draw your own character and make it one fun activity. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, feel free to send me pictures through my email um, at marple.jennifer at unionps.org. I would love to see what you guys come up with. Um, have fun and I'll see you guys next time.